and speak good things about him. Amen? You can pay me later. <laughs> okay. We are the people of the new covenant through Christ's shed blood at Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he came to earth to die. That was his purpose. Thank you, Lord. My husband reminded me of the conversation that he saw of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit up in heaven. And the Father was saying, okay, this atoning uh, blood, the blood sacrifice of the animals is just not going to cut it anymore. There has to be a man that's going to be a perfect lamb that's going to be, that will shed his blood. And the son said, it's okay, Father, I'll do it, I'll go. Mm -hmm. Does that stir up your heart? It's like, oh, would you send your son to die? Oh, sweet Jesus. But he sent his son to die so that we could be reconciled back to the Father. It had to be a perfect lamb, the perfect man, no sin, and willing to go to Calvary to die for us. Oh, sweet Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If we are to fulfill the calling that God has for this church, the village church, we are going to need to walk in unity. We can't be at enmity with each other. We have to be in unity. Amen. With our arms linked and do the greater works that Christ has called us to do. If we are to fulfill the calling that God has spoken over us, we have to walk in the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit. John 16, 7 says, Nevertheless, and this is what Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Jesus had to go because he was a man. Yes, he was God, but he was man. He could only be one place at one time. He needed to go back to the Father so he could send the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's here. He's everywhere. He's in India right now. He's in Russia. He's in China. He's in Antarctica. He's everywhere. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Pastor Kevin also had an altar call on Sunday night for those who wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he put that out. Um, and the, the altar was filled. The altar was filled. Um, many of them, many of the, those that came forward were from Team Challenge. But there were some, when he first asked, does anyone here want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? I think only two hands went up, two or three hands went up. And then he um, extended the call, and there were others that said they wanted a fresh filling, a fresh filling of the Spirit. Okay? Um, and what I began to see as, and I, I am in no way discrediting, and please don't misunderstand me, but when I saw the altars being filled, I went in the back to just intercede and pray and watch. And um, I knew that every person that was up here wanted the touch from the Father. They wanted the touch of God. There's yeah. something they were seeking. Some of them were seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some of them were seeking deliverance. Some of them were seeking a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. So there were many, many needs that were being met, but I felt like there was, a, a, he said that there would be no tarry, tarrying, you know, pressing through, pressing through, pressing through until you got it. But I felt like that there were some that were just struggling. Because they didn't know how to receive. They did not know how to receive what God wanted for them. The gift is so right there for all of us. But a lot of times, we don't know how to receive it. And it's so easy. We're the ones that have made it difficult. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is absolutely vital. I cannot tell you 
the Lord has pressed in my spirit how vital it is for us to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yes, we receive the Holy Spirit at salvation. We receive Father, Son, and Holy Spirit when we are saved. That is an ongoing experience. That's and when someone had said that they wanted to be, uh, they wanted a fresh filling. That's the fresh filling. That's coming to the waters and getting filled once more. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a one-time experience. Only once do we get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Are you all with me? I didn't know this. So if you didn't know that, don't feel bad because when I got saved and, and when I uh, sought the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I had absolutely no teaching. So I didn't know what I was seeking. And I want to share that experience with you so that if this is what you experienced then you would feel like, well, it's okay. I was at a uh, Bible study. My husband and I had not yet been married, but we had been going to a, a Bible study together, and the pastor there um, felt this uh, that everyone needed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So what he did was he walked around and he had his wife. There's nothing wrong with what he was doing. He had his wife standing behind him, and he walked around and he touched each person, and he prayed over us, and then he said. Just start to go, and just do what I do. And so I did. And he said, okay, you got it. And then he moved on, and I went, God, what? What did I get? I don't feel anything. I don't, I, I don't really know what it was I was asking for. Has anybody else had that kind of experience? The Shandalaha? Thank you, Mary Beth. Thank you for your honesty because, you know, this is where the church really has erred in receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 1 John 4, 7 through 19 says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because he is, so are we in this world. But there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. In the New uh, International, it says, um, NIV, it says punishment. Fear involves punishment. He who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. There is a fear about receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. There really is, because it seems so lofty, and we don't understand it. And God's going to take hold of my tongue, and he's going to make me say things that I don't want to say, and I won't be in control. And that's not what it's about. That's such a lie of the enemy, absolute abomination of what the church has bought into. Is this okay, Pastor? Okay. All right, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> really? We have to know the truth. That the gift, it's a gift. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a gift from God. Jesus said, I must go so that I can send the Comforter, that I can send him to you. And when he comes, then he's going to baptize you. So he said, go and wait. And so 11 of the disciples, because Judas had hung himself, 11 of the disciples, so 120 minus 11 means 109 people, plus the 11 disciples, 120 are in the upper room. They go and they wait and they pray and they wait and they wait. And all of a sudden came the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Holy Spirit means holy wind. The sound they heard was the Spirit of God coming into that room. The Holy Spirit came as a mighty rushing wind. And then there were cloven tongues of fire. The Holy Spirit is fire upon them. And then they were baptized. 
Baptized means the Holy Spirit came upon them, came within them, and out of their mouths they spoke in languages that they did not know. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues. That's the evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. The baptism is receiving that power of the Holy Spirit, which we need. We've got to have a church. We've got to have it. We're dead in the water if we don't have 